Hey, welcome to Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're taking an inside look at gift giving. Hi, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about how God's generosity gives us a reason to give to others. Why are you so small? What are you doing with that? Oh, <laughs> wrapping some birthday gifts for a party. Hmm, interesting. Well, how's it going? Uh, great. Actually, I had a little mishap. Help! So, how many did you wrap? Oh, um, about zero. You know, gift giving is kind of overrated. First you have to buy it, then you have to wrap it, and then you have to deliver it. Uh, Maybe you just need to make it more fun. More fun? How? I've been working on something. Oh, please tell me it's a gift wrapping robot. This is more about the gift delivery part. Oh, well, let's finish making it. Today, we're going to finish up a catapult. Ooh, very medieval. Uh, patience, my friend. To catch you up, first I built this frame out of popsicle sticks and handicraft cubes. Then I put together this arm also using popsicle sticks and handicraft cubes. You never considered that I might want in on this uh, catapultuous action? 
you, my friend, get to put it all together. Oh, <laughs> yes, I'm in. What do I do? All right, take this dowel and lay it on top of these cubes in the frame to see how long it should be. Oh, oh okay. Um, so, like that? Spot on. Yeah, you can cut it right there. Or I can use my incredibly strong muscles. That works. Great. Now, thread this dowel through this hole in the middle of the arm and pop the ends into the holes in the frame. Sounds easy enough. Got it. Catapult complete. Almost. Now, glue this popsicle stick to the bottom part of the end. Right here. There you go. Okay. Oh, I get it. This will keep the arm from flying out of control. Exactly. Oof. All this work is making me thirsty. Is that what the cups are for? Uh, no. Final step. Glue this cup onto the end of the arm, and just to be safe, let's tape it down to it. Go ahead and glue that right here. We'll run from the inside of the cup. Okay. All the way around the back. How's it look? Great. Ooh. No, I say it's time for some gift delivery. Okay, it's all built, it's all ready, oh, right? Yeah, it's ready. Okay. Put all these in here. Oh right? yeah, load them up. Load it up. Almost. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Alrighty, here goes. Special delivery. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, good. A catapult is known as a simple machine or lever because it has only two parts, an arm that you push on and a fulcrum where the arm balances. The longer the arm, the farther the object will fly. My turn. Okay, go, go. Yeah, put a little on. Perfect, perfect. Oh, I can't wait. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's way too short. You know, this is way too easy. I've got a better idea. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Great okay. idea. One. Yeah. Oh, we really get that. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do it. <sighs> okay. Okay. That was a good one. Yeah. But. I think it's time to make this special delivery personal. How so? Do you trust me? Yes. No. Maybe. In three, two, one. Ah. Try again. Okay. Oh, it's so <laughs> close. My mouth isn't big enough. Oh, I did it. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, you're right. This kind of gift giving is totally fun. Right? Which reminds me, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is one of 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus followers what was true, and they often wrote letters to do that. The Apostle Paul sent several of these letters to the believers in the church at Corinth. Paul had visited Corinth on a second missionary journey to tell people about Jesus. Though the church had struggled in the past, now they were following God with their whole hearts. So Paul wrote a letter to encourage them. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. And I love this time of year that's coming up. <laughs> All the amazing food and the decorations and lights and, well, <laughs> everyone's favorite, gifts. <laughs> it's pretty exciting to think about what you might get this year, right? But let me clue you in on a little secret. Your grown-ups 
are just as excited about giving you gifts as you are about opening them. It's true. I mean, you might have even discovered this yourself. When you draw a really cool picture for somebody, or bake them cookies, or maybe even use your own money to buy something, you can't wait to see how they feel when you give it to them, right? Oh, wow, this is totally awesome. Well, when Paul wrote his letter to 2 Corinthians, he had a lot to say about giving. You do well in everything else, so make sure that you also do well in the grace of giving to others. Paul explained that he was going to be sending his friend Titus to visit the Corinthians. Titus would collect an offering of money to help Jesus followers in Jerusalem who were really going through really hard times. And Paul wanted the Corinthian believers to be ready. He told them this. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. You shouldn't give if you don't want to. You shouldn't give because you are forced to. God loves a cheerful giver. Let's take a look at that again. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. You shouldn't give if you don't want to. You shouldn't give because you are forced to. <sighs> I mean, let's be real. You know when your mom says you have to give your sibling a hug to make up after an argument? Mm-hmm. And you glare and squeeze them so tight that they can't breathe? <clears throat> yeah. That's not true generosity, come on. The kind of giving that Paul means is when you make up your mind to give because you want to do it. And that brings up the last part of the verse. God loves a cheerful giver. We actually have some pretty awesome reasons to want to give and to do it with a good attitude. Let's start here. First of all, you don't need lots of stuff to be a cheerful giver. In his letter, Paul told the Corinthians about some churches in Macedonia. He wrote, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the churches in Macedonia. In their suffering, their joy was more than full. Even though they were very poor, they gave very freely. They did more than we expected. So if you don't have lots of stuff, that's okay. Even a small act of giving can matter in a big way. In fact, you can be a cheerful giver because God can do big things with a small gift. Paul wrote, God will increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. If you choose to give five minutes of your time to video chat your grandma, it might just make her entire day. That's five short minutes that grow into 24 hours of awesome. Another reason you can be a cheerful giver is because it helps others see God. Your gifts meet the needs of the Lord's people. They will praise God because you share freely with them. When you give with a good attitude, others can see God at work. God is the ultimate giver. So when we share what we have, we reflect a little bit of who God is to the world around us. Knowing why we can give with a good attitude can help us to actually do it. And if you're gonna give, start with a smile. Just the act of smiling will make you feel more cheerful. Then, Choose not to grumble about giving your time or stuff. And once you've made up your mind to do it, don't focus on what you're giving up. Instead, focus on how awesome you're making that other person feel. Your giving can go further than you know. Like Paul wrote, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. You shouldn't give if you don't want to. You shouldn't give because you are a force to. God loves a cheerful giver. And that is the end. Funny how that works. Sometimes when I give something away, I'm the one who feels better. But sometimes I don't feel like being generous in the first place. Yeah, well, I think we're all kind of wired to want to hold on to what we have, you know? So what's our part in the story? What God wants most is for you to become more and more like Jesus, who acted with generosity to everyone. Generosity is making someone's day by giving something away. When you're tempted to hold on to what you have or to grumble about giving, remember that every single thing you have is already a gift from God. Your possessions, your time, all of it. We are all like managers of God's stuff. Yeah, and when we give, God can use it to do big things. When you keep that in mind, you might even be able to get excited about what your giving can do. It can shift your whole attitude. 
You can choose to be a cheerful giver if you set aside some of your allowance each week to help others. Or when you give your time to help out a younger sibling with their homework. Or to help your grandma figure out the TV remote. Even be cheerful about sharing an amazing batch of Christmas cookies with your neighbors when you really want to eat them all. You know, like... Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> the more you choose to give with a good attitude, the more you'll find yourself making somebody's day by giving something away. And this is a great time of year to practice. Sure is. Also, huh, now I want cookies. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Give with a good attitude. Even if the wrapping part is a fiasco. You know, I don't think people really care how you give a gift, as long as you're happy doing it. Yeah, and I feel extra happy when I see their joy. Win-win. Speaking of, Carter, Here's a little something for you. Oh, you shouldn't have, Zeke. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See, See you next, next time. time. Do you like your gift? Yes, um, I have a question. Yeah. Do you mind delivering it to me via catapult? That sounds like a great idea. Yes. Let's go, 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 go. All right. You ready? Yep. Oh, so Thank close. You. Come on, another one. Oh, a bit too high, Thank a bit you. too high. You did